Greetings, Skill Incarnate bringing you all the latest indie gaming goodness. Welcome back as we look at another indie game. This time we're looking at World War II Rebuilder. This was developed by Madnetic Games and published by my friends at Playway SA. Playway are quickly becoming the go-to publisher for some of the world's best simulation games. And World War II is no exception. In this game, we are visiting the cities of World War II, not to destroy, but to rebuild. To bring these cities back from the brink of destruction, mastering the game's new construction and destruction mechanics. We'll defuse bombs, clear rubble, and rebuild these cities as good as new. This game is one of my favorite entries in Playway's construction and simulation games, and I think all of you are going to love it. Let's have a look at World War II Rebuilder. During the war, the railway was used mainly for evacuating children from cities to the countryside and for military transportation. Now, the train to London was full of volunteers eager to rebuild the capital. Communication lines were one of the targets of Nazi air raids. Probably more than one military train had to stop in front of the destroyed section of the track, or was even destroyed itself by enemy bombs. But even without hostile activity, transporting ammunition is a dangerous undertaking. In nearby Soham, the train station was destroyed when a wagon full of explosives blew up on the platform. Something is not right. Our train stops, but it is still a long way to London. What's going on there? Broken tracks, rubble and wrecks. My God. Is this the Soham disaster all over again? So the game begins with us in the small town of Gimbert with a train station that's been devastated by a explosion. Our train is stuck here, and it's our job to clear the tracks and to get our friends through to London to begin the repair efforts. We are a young man, an engineer who has seen the horrors of war, whose family was claimed by them. Our goal is to rebuild the cities of the world, trying to restore them to their former glory for future generations. Now along the way we're going to learn a, a bunch of new tricks and we're also going to learn the the new building and the the deconstruction mechanics which I really really enjoy. One of my little gripes with some of the previous games in the in the simulation series by Playway was that most of the resources that you picked up were rubbish items that only had value in selling them. In this game you ha are able to pick up resources and use them to rebuild, to repair, and it really makes a bit of resource management to the game. It makes it a little bit more engaging, a little bit more, a, a little bit more thinking in your builds. So I'm just going to chuck the wood we've found so far. We're going to need to scavenge for everything we can find because we don't have a lot of money right now. Now one of the, the things I love about the new deconstruction mechanics, in the previous games you would just smack something with a hammer or an axe and boom you get a pile of resources. There really wasn't much depth to it. And you can certainly break smaller items like these, but for bigger ones like this train, tra uh, train carriage that has been destroyed, we're going to need to use a, a cutting tool to break it into small pieces so we can pick it up. So we'll get all of this scrap metal off and then as you can see we're going to have to get a cutting torch out and cut it down into small pieces. And of course these pieces are going to be used to build fresh train tracks that we can, that we can get our train through to London. So you have to look around, find the weak points in the structures that you're trying to pull apart and carefully cut them. 
as you can see we we pulled one train carriage to pieces and we're going to do the other one now there's a bit of inventory management in this game too we can only carry so much so I'm going to head back and drop these resources in the train or in our resource barrels here beautiful now the resource barrels are just used to store your stuff you can always come back and grab them as you need them and you're going to want to try and reuse every scrap of material that you find because you can buy stuff but you've got to remember this is post World War II cities uh, there's not a lot of resources around and everyone's just kind of scraping by and we're no exception we have to use whatever we can find to build you're not going to find giant stockpiles of resources just laying everywhere and neither can I go around just buying huge amounts of of building materials because they're not available the UK has been ravaged by war most of the time we're going to have to do things like this cut apart broken buildings and broken vehicles and use the resources to rebuild fortunately or unfortunately we've we've got a fair amount of resources to choose from I'm going to need to get some rubble to lay some more tracks so we've got some metal here we're going to take all the rubble we're going to use that to lay fresh tracks and then we can we can move the train up the game it does feel a lot more involved and a lot more detailed than the previous games the previous simulation games and one thing I've really enjoyed watching with Playway SA with these simulation games they've kind of just gotten better with with every title it's uh, they've, they've gotten a little bit better there you go now I need a little bit more rubble thankfully there's plenty around as you can see we can bust all this up take it all now it's going to be hard to get to it so I'm going to rip out the cutting torch again see if I can find some weak points I can ah here we go now I, I love this I love the way that each individual item that you have to cut up you have different patterns you know, if you've got a large sheet of metal, you, you've got to kind of find the weak points, find the seams, as it were, and boom. It feels a lot more realistic in the previous games where you just whack it with a hammer or an axe and then bang, you've got a bunch of resources you can use. And more importantly, the resources that you get, you, you, you have to use them very strategically. Because it is... It is very easy if you build the wrong things to burn through all the resources you've got and then you've got to dip into your own funds to to purchase more okay let's have a look and see using our scan very nice we found a hidden letter to the children I write this letter mostly for myself I know you wouldn't understand much as it is for now maybe you'll keep it and someday you'll read it as adults and will forgive you'll forgive me or maybe you'll hate me even more sending you away was the right choice as it was your father's to go fight f for the continent all of this was to keep you safe and you are safe and I am heartbroken Part of my heart broke off when Tom left for war. Two small pieces broke off when I saw you leaving on the train. Another bit broke off yesterday when they said that Tom, your daddy, was killed in France. I'm left with this torn, bleeding scrap of a heart, and you can't even imagine how painful it is. 
So way to you for you as a torment, I, I'll have to be your parent again. All on my own feels no better. I can't say I don't love you anymore. I can't do, I just can't do this anymore. Not here, not with you, not w without him. I hope maybe you could stay with your foster parents. They'll take good care of you too. We'll never see each other again, mum. That is just, that is gut-wrenching. That, that, that's a parent that's, that has, um, has just been broken. They've, they're, they're utterly broken. The war has, and the horror of what they've, they've had to go through has just, um, has shattered them. And now they've had to give up their children. I can't imagine having to give up my family like that. Um, and yeah, this game, it feels a lot more serious than the, the previous games, which I found very surprising. I mean, obviously, you don't need to have a you don't need to have a serious game all the time, but this this kind of hits different to Playway's previous games. They're always you know they're, they're casual games where you're not really you're not really getting emotionally invested in a story, and you can kind of go through here without hunting down all the collectibles. But I found. It's, it's quite addictive to try and find every letter. It kind of paints a picture of the, the people of the cities, what they went through, and, and the events that led up to these, these terrible you know, these, these terrible events that happened. Um, oh, I need more metal. Let's grab some more metal. Now, helps if I take the metal. Some resources are much heavier than others too, so you need to be careful about how much you're carrying on you. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so we've got new tracks. And I think, ah, we've got a, a train that we need to cut apart. Again, this is very big, so we're going to have to do a bit of finessing here. We're cutting along the seams here to try and cut this into sections. I, I really like that. You don't just go up with the with the the torch and just kind of click on it and bang. You got resources. Very very clever. It, it feels like I'm a real engineer because I mean this is what you do with a with a welding torch. I used to do a bit of metal work in my younger days, along with electronics. There's not a lot of electronics in this game, it's mainly just straight engineering. It's, it's I mean, set during World War II, so you wouldn't expect to see high-tech technology. And most of the tools in this game are kind of, uh, they're, they're accurate to the time period. There's going to be a ton of resources we can use. Metal being obviously the most used resource in the game. Most of the cities are built, well, I guess it depends on the locale. Uh, in cities like the UK that are heavily industrialised, most of the resources you're going to need are metal and possibly bricks. Whereas when you go to areas like France, it's more, it's more old school with um, stone and wood. Okay, let's get this. It's going to be a fair bit of cunning to do. But that being said, once we actually get this cut to pieces, this will give us all the all the metal we're going to need. And we're going to need this to repair the rest of the station. Let's just check what we're missing. A small section in here. Once we've cut all this, it'll, it'll fall apart nice and neat for us. Just wondering what I'm missing now. Ah, there we go. There you can see it's a it's a ton of metal there. Gonna 
Get this little bit here. That should hopefully come apart for us. Oh, we missed one little section there. We dropped the bottom out of it. Got the guts out of it. And once you pull one section off, you, you're able to get to other areas of the train. There we go. We cut the walls apart. All that lovely metal that we're going to need. We're also going to need to rebuild furniture, doors, walls. We're going to need to kind of uh, get this place back to back to where it was. And some of that's going to be rebuilding stuff, making new furniture. Let's um, dump that in there. Got the metal in there. We'll go and finish getting this all cut up. Here's a hidden letter. Hopefully it's a little bit uh, more cheery than the last one. Uh, cargo manifest, drum magazine, armor piercing. Okay, so this is all 303 caliber rounds, explosives and incendiary rounds. Oh, they lost a lot of... 50 magazines of drum, uh, 50 drum magazines, 1,004, I mean, this would have blown up big. We're, we're talking barrels and barrels of ammo. This would have, this would have gone up huge. Explains why this is, uh, is completely knackered. But we should be able to use these resources to get the station up and running again. We've nearly got it. The only thing is that you can get these kind of floating uh, floating items if you don't deconstruct them in the right order. You're able to get these, as you can see, that's kind of hanging in midair. It's not a big deal, but there's a couple of clipping issues in the game. But a lot of it's just kind of really, really minor stuff. Okay, lots and lots of metal, which we're going to be using soon. Okay, we've got one more seam to cut. Beautiful. Look at all that. Lovely, lovely resources. Okay, so let's head back up to the station. Uh, we need to build a new canopy. Now, one of the things I've learnt about these simulation games, it's always good to do things in sections. You clean one area of the map and then you move on. Otherwise, it's very, very easy to miss items. And even when you do that, you will st still miss items. Uh, I need to clean this off. Letters to London. They miss you too. Okay, there's a... It's a bit of World War II... Um, I wouldn't say propaganda, but, uh, you know, the, the old uh, Uncle Sam Wants You style style uh, advertisements. All these are kind of knackered, so we can... You now, can actually use... One, one thing I haven't been using is a shovel. Use a shovel will let you pick up a bunch of stuff at once. There we go. I wanted to show you some of the new mechanics before I just busted in with a shovel. We've got plenty of resources here. Let's get up in here. Okay, beautiful. We're gonna need all this stuff soon. All these bricks, definitely. Okay, beautiful. That ought to do it, and we have to rebuild a pavilion here. We 
looking good. Okay, so that's everything on this side of the station. Uh, you need to build something, so let's build a... Ooh, that looks nice. And that's going to put some windows in. That's going to take 50. Simple. Large walls. Okay, well, let's just go with a large canopy. And what we'll need is metal. And we're going to need lots of it, which um, thankfully, as you can see, I've got tons and tons of metal from the old canopies that were destroyed. Here we go. Just we're just putting down the frame. Out of metal again. We've got plenty though. I'm not worried about running out anytime soon. Now you can actually build a ladder. And we will, we will need to use a ladder later on, but for now, I can just about fit it in. I think this is just about it. Nope, we need more. Okay, more metal. You can see why I've been hoarding the stuff. And you can also see why I picked the, the smaller structure to build. Because we probably wouldn't have had enough metal. I would have had to buy some metal. Because we've burnt through most of our stockpile now. We need bricks. Okay. That might be a problem. See how we go. We should just have enough. Nope, not enough bricks. Now, what we do have is a stockpile. Now, if you interact with some of the ghosts in the level, you'll be able to see the history of the place. As you can see here, we've, we can see the, the town as it used to be, with all the people running around and a train coming in. This will be the ill-fated train with the ammunition that exploded, as you can see. The ammunition blew up and destroyed the rails. So now we need to get to some some bricks. And that's going to be pretty straightforward. Because we just need some wood. And we just need to build... A ladder. Ah, there we go. It's got plenty of wood. Now we can start rebuilding the stairs. And getting to the old tower here. Find ourselves another letter. Two 
Two dead and number injured. The tragic incident occurred yesterday at 1.45pm in the small town of Sowam in East Cambridgeshire. A heavy train consisting of 44 wagons with a total weight of 400 tons of bombs and fighter parts rolled to the town's train station with one of the wagons on fire. The military load could have exploded any second. When the train driver Benjamin Gimbert realised what was happening, he instructed John Nightingale, the fireman, to uncouple the burning wagon. Immediately after the cart was separated, Gimbert started to draw it away from the station. The explosion took place at 150 yards from the station buildings. The distance was enough to prevent the chain reaction that would have led to the explosion of the entire train. However, John Nightingale died in the disaster and put the station's signman Frank Bridges present at the platform at the time of explosion. Died today in the hospital. So as you can see, the, the train driver actually had saved everybody. As you can see, the train driver bravely saved everybody at the station by decoupling the train. Unfortunately, he himself died, but he saved countless people with his brave actions. So with a bit of work, we can get this up and running again. Beautiful, we need some wood, which I've got. Beautiful. So that's the canopy done. Now with everything clear, we just need to start fixing this section up. Which will involve a judicious use of our trusty hammer. Removing weeds and clearing rubble. Looking good. We're starting to make headway. Now we're in the last section of the train. Um, there's a huge supply of bricks in the tower storage. We figured that out already. I managed to get into the tower and smash the lock off so we can get as many bricks as we need. We're going to be using those in a moment. Stop messing up my town birds. All this lovely rubble we're going to be using. You can see here we've, we're also going to have to replace the drainage pipes eventually too, but just for now, my main focus in most of these levels is to try and clean them out first, then we can worry about rebuilding. Get all the resources we can, and then we can start worrying about where to apply them. Okay, so we're out of space. We got tons of wood. We're going to need that to replace the roof because the roof is knackered too. Okay, I think that is now everything. Oop, a couple of bits of rubbish. Looking good.
Now, one of the other applications of the raw resources we have is to construct new furniture. So we're going to have to make some new furniture soon, but for now we're just going to have to fix the... I want to try and get rid of the most egregious problems. You know, that building that brick wall is going to take a fair bit of resources, so now I'm just going to grab everything I can. Now I don't know if you noticed, but there's a little bit of a bug in the game where sometimes resources fall through the floor. It doesn't happen often enough to be game-breaking to the point where you don't have enough to finish a level. But it is a little bit annoying. It seems to be random when it happens. So when you break an item, what I suggest you do is not to break multiple items. Break one item, pick up all the resources and move on. That seems to be the, the best way to avoid losing resources. Okay, getting there. We have to fix this wall. I'm going to do that now. Clean the wall up. Now I'm really hoping this soot isn't a, you know, a Chernobyl sort of situation where it's the ashes of dead people. I'm, I'm just hoping this is a, it's just regular old grime and not human remains. But we've got that. Don't be sad, Teddy. The evacuation is part of the war effort. So I, I really do like that this game has a bit more of a somber, dark tone. You know, a lot of a lot of Playway's previous games had either a satirical or a light-hearted uh, feel to them. And while I do like that, I can also appreciate them trying to trying to delve into more serious, uh, more serious subjects. And for this game, it works quite well. You know, you don't have to go and hunt down all the collecti uh, collectibles if you don't want to. But if you really want to experience the, the full story and the background of the game, I do recommend you do that. It's also a really good way to understand the, the lore of the game and obviously, you know, the, the what happens in these these locations. Now, my... My World War II history I haven't brushed up on in a while, but a lot of these locations are real-world locations, and a lot of the events that are mentioned in this game are real. So it is kind of tragic when you realise a lot of this stuff that happened, you know, the, the people talking about, you know, having, having passed away, this, this did happen. It did happen. Very scary. Okay, so let's just... Finish up the last of this. Can I? No. There we go. You have to get it very, very precise. Beautiful. Oh, that stopped the water. Beautiful. I missed this in my last attempt. I was wondering how to fix the water leak. There you go. Very nice. And that's what I love about the game, because with each game, each simulation, Playway add more realistic elements to the game, and I love that. They have different different developer teams doing this, but they're definitely using what they've learned from previous games. Okay, so we've got, um, we've got a wall we need to knock down. That or to do it.
Okay, so now we've got the wall knocked out, we have to get some bricks, which of course we got plenty of. Thankfully there were pallets and pallets of bricks inside the inside the warehouse. We're going to be using all those. Plus all the ones that we've got in storage as well. Now, obviously, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna have to get up pretty high, so I'm, I'm gonna build myself a ladder in a second. In fact, let's do that now. Uh, we'll build a. Well, let's um. Let's build a ladder for now. A little bit of scrap wood. I mean, obviously, it's a bit of a ghetto ladder. Probably not the most safe structure to be risking my life on, but it'll do for now. Now, you can buy stuff, of course, but I'm, I'm what I'm trying to do is use all of the resources I've got at my disposal and, and minimise wastage. So we're getting here. Eventually we'll be able to build up to the roof and we'll have to fix the roof as well. Try and see if I can get this any closer so I don't have to stand literally. Okay. That's better. So it's a bit of a slow process, and, and again, all the stuff I said about previous games rings true here. You've got a um, you've got a, a very relaxing sort of game. A coffin ticket. This is going to be dark. Waterloo. Uh, oh, okay. It's a um, it's a train ticket. Okay, hundred another hundred bricks. Now later on, once we've got a bit of money with the more the more complex builds, we're going to have to put in a bit of cash. But the early part of the game, we'll try and conserve as much as you can, put some money together, and and put some uh, get some extra resources too. You can get up to five stars. You can see in the right hand or the left hand corner. Sorry, I've got a I've got a rating, and I've only got two and a half stars, which means we're only halfway where we need to be. We're hopefully going to, once we get this wall built, we'll, we'll make some progress. We've also got a, a rather nasty surprise the Germans left us. I'm going to have to deal with once I've gotten all the city rebuilt. Like we're just, just going to have enough bricks to do this. We've got 50, 50 left. Now we have to grab our ladder and we're going to paint this bad boy. Oh, I'm going to have to... May need the ladder, but let's do as much as we can here. So we're just painting some mortar on these bricks. Good as new, baby. I've done this in real life. It's certainly not as... Uh, 
Not as cruisy as this game shows it, but it's still pretty realistic. I mean, you're not... Um, a, a lot of their previous games, you just kind of... You, know, you just press the button and bang. It painted a wall. Or you had a roller and you just kind of... Like, just instantly... Instantly fix it. You have to... You have to do... Uh, you have to be thoughtful. With your build. So we've got the wall all sorted. Next thing is the roof. So let's get up on there. Yeah, I think I'm not... I think my ladder's not going to cut it. No, it's not. So the next thing we're going to need to do is build ourselves a scaffold. The scaffold is a, a much bigger structure and we can actually stack a, a ladder on top of that. Okay, well, whoop. so we need to build a Okay, we need to build ourselves a roof, we can't So we go structures Roofing One of those, whoops, I probably wanted to craft that, not buy it that's okay. I've got. I've, that's why I keep some spare money for. It's all good. Okay. First thing we're gonna have to do is just um, get rid of the bastard materials and use our wood to replace the beams. I was actually doing this on the weekend in real life, so. I'm sure my experience playing these games helped me in my carpentry efforts. Looking good. So we need uh, we need some more wood. Now, thankfully, I do have a ton of that. That I have been saving up. Get the rest of this roof banged out and then we can drop the new roof on the top and that will pretty much take care of most of the most of the main builds this side I'm going to come in pretty close here I'm probably going to have to spend a little bit of money to get this last part built up but it is certainly worth it Okay, now we can install the roof and okay I need, I need another roof that's okay roofing we'll craft one of those Ah, okay, I need um I need some bricks. Which we have in the train. We're out of bricks. So we thankfully we did bring some materials with us. We'll go and get some of those. Well, I think that's about it, yep. We've, we've been given just enough. Just enough to get the job done. Okay, oh, we need to build it first. Building materials and roofing and craft okay we've got just enough just enough to get this done bam and I've got my end roof end that I capped off there and well, now we'll need to do a bit of a ah, how do I get out of here is the question ah there we go beautiful excellent 
So now we've actually finished the level, or the main parts of it. But what I'd like to do is to have a look and see what we can we can do to get 100%. So we've got, first we've got to find the bomb. Now this, this is the one part of the level I haven't managed to master. I managed to find this damn thing. It's hidden over here. It's a, a present left by the Nazis. An unexploded bomb. We're going to try and, we're going to try and rewire this thing. It's pretty hard to do. You may find the remnants of explosives. You can rid them by calling sappers for a fee or defusing them yourself. You have to count all the wires, turning the switch on the left side will turn the light at the top. If the light is red, you have to adjust the knob on the right side of the wire until the light turns green. Okay. So, let's, um, we'll give it a go. It, it, I haven't managed to pull this off yet. So, if we flip the first switch, and we'll, we've got a time limit if it's not hard enough. We turn the switch. Then we cut it. Next one. We turn the switch. Come on. Oh, there we go. Then we cut it. Last one. No matter how much I turn this thing, it won't. Oh, oh, oh I got it. I got it. You champion. Whoa. I have no idea how I did that. I tried that three times last time and I ended up just calling the sappers in frustration. Uh, it's quite expensive. They'll come and uh, the pros will come and get rid of the bomb for you. We've got another flashback of the... That's showing us how that bomb got there. As the Germans flew over the top and pelted hell out of this place. So now I've just got to do a few little repairs to get our last bit of um, prestige, so to say. Or we just have to cut this off here. And we have to cut here. And then we can just replace it with a little bit of metal, which of course we've um, we got plenty of. A bit of fresh metal will get that good as new. Go grab some more. Okay, and we have to do some decorations as well. We'll worry about that in a minute. But now let's. Let's um, crank up these fresh gutters. This has to come down to. And fresh gutters in here. Beautiful. So that's the gutters done, and we have to do one last thing, which is to get rid of... Uh, I will get you, bird. I will get you. Now, if we check our to-do list, we need light seats and tables and vegetation. So what we can do is go in here and craft some vegetation. I'm just going to pick something nice and cheap. Um, and that will do. Because we don't have a lot of money right now. We'll build, we'll make some simple pots. And we'll drop these by the door. Just to brighten things up a little bit. And let's see how that's going. 
Ah, beautiful vegetation's done. Now we just need some seats. And if we get some wood, I can build some simple benches. Because it, it's a train station. We need some benches here. People need somewhere to sit. So let's go to seats and tables. And we'll grab some simple wooden benches. They'll do four of those. Boom, boom, boom. And I mean, these, these, these people obviously need somewhere to take a load off. So let's help them out with that. And we'll chuck one here. One here. One here. And one here. Looking good. Okay, couple more seats. We can we can add a seat and a table there. So let's add a a table, a very simple table. Um, well let's have we got a table we can add? Surely there's something simple we can. There we go. Oh, and a chess table. There we go. I mean, you can't have a station without a decent game of chess. We'll pop it here. People can just sit here, look through the window, contemplate the world, play a game of chess. Very nice. And we need a couple of seats for that. So let's get those going. A couple of simple chairs. That'll do. Perfect. Nice and cheap. We've got plenty of wood. I love me a good game of chess. How's that? Okay, now we just need some lights. So what we can do is we'll get some hanging lights because we don't have a lot of... Oh, we've got plenty of real estate, so... Let's hang some up. Lanterns. Oh, they're expensive. Let's... No, they're not. Ah, we can... Chinese lanterns. Very nice. A little bit out of the... It's not the, uh, the motif of this station, but... I'll take it. We'll put a couple of lanterns here in front of the windows. A little bit of light. I like me some Chinese lanterns, so that's what we're going to have. We got some more lights as well. And we're going to. Uh, we can't fit any here. That's okay. We can put some inside. And I believe, as I've just gotten myself a very nice achievement, that is a hundred percent. And with that, we've completed the Gimbert mission of World War II Rebuilder. Now, this was a ton of fun. I cannot recommend this game enough. And this is, in my opinion, the very best simulation game that Playways released so far. And you know I've liked them all, so that's high praise indeed. If you're going to buy a simulation game from Playway SA, this is the one to start with. World War II Rebuilder is one of the best and most innovative simulation games they've done so far. And if you don't believe me, have a look at the reviews. In any case, massive thanks to my friends at Playway SA. I've really been enjoying their game so far and I hope to bring you more in the future. In fact, I've got another one coming up soon, so stay tuned. If you like this video, leave me a like, leave me a subscribe, and I hope you'll join me next time when we look at another indie game. Until then, Skill Incarnate, out.